you're on the spot there. Uh, Jeremy Leach. Yeah, sorry, just on that. So I've just popped in, I've just popped in the chat, the link with a thing called the Healthy Street Scorecard, which compares across all the 33 boroughs in terms of a number of indicators, one of which is the degree of coverage of controlled parking zones. And if it's at all appropriate, I can show the graph now on share screen, but I totally understand if you don't want to do that. But um, yeah, I can show you where Southwark sits in relation to um, comparative boroughs. So, but anyway, the data is exactly in that link if you want to see how it compares. Thanks, Jeremy. I think that's helpful. Um, I, I had a question, if I may, um, and that was uh, in relation to a recommendation that was made in the Climate Emergency Roadmap back in October 2019. Um, both of the recommendations mentioned, um, you know, for the council to provide an update on work with London councils in response to trying to agree a single framework across London for carbon emission reduction and to develop a carbon rating system. Um, I note the response from the officers which um, mentions that London councils um, have established a carbon account in tasks and finish group um, and that uh, the first meeting was held um, and there's a schedule being set up for future meetings to take this forward and so that continues to work with London councils. Um, are you, is it, um, Chris, this might be for you, are you able to kind of give some insight into you know, what happened at that first meeting and what Southwark's role has been specifically um, in relation to, uh, you know, raising some of the concerns or, or some of the, raising some of the recommendations that were made um, by the Commission in relation to carbon, carbon rating system or single framework across London. Um, yeah, could you maybe shed some light on Southwark's role on that and, um, and what's going to happen after this task and finish group in, in relation to, um, you know, the terms of reference the group has set out? Sure. Um, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, so, so yes, as it says in the written response, um, this is an area where we felt rather than us as a borough trying to work out sort of carbon rating for ourselves and, uh, and accounting for ourselves, it's something where we think there's real value in working with other boroughs. Um, as much as anything, because at the moment, different boroughs all, all, all calculate things in a slightly different way. And if you're, uh, if you want to genuinely see what what's going on and who's doing well and who isn't and who could be doing more you have to have some means by which you can compare uh, the sort of success or otherwise of different boroughs so I, I, we're very much of the view this is a something that's best held by London councils um, so in terms of what we have done on that we you know we, we, we met with London councils um, well I met with London councils um, early on when I started the role early last year and, and and raised this as an issue that we we wanted to work on it was something that other boroughs had done the same on and they were at, at that stage trying to work out their kind of priorities um, to work on and this got into that as, as, a, as, a, as a priority for them um, we're not actually on that task and finish group so we're not we're not a member of that um, there are a number of different groups going on across London at the moment and I think boroughs are having to think about where can they add the most value and we can't be on all of the different groups so we're not actually on this one but we will get report re reports back uh, from them on it and I can certainly I don't know um, the outcome of that meeting I don't know the sort of the outcome of the work yet but I can certainly will certainly report back to this commission um, if that would be helpful in the future I'm um, just for interest for the committee we're actually leading there are seven pieces of work that are going on across London at the moment. We're leading on one of those with a lead borough on, it's called Green and Resilient London. And it's the work that's happening across London on, on how you ensure that, although we're all trying to tackle uh, the climate emergency by reducing carbon, that even if the globe stopped producing carbon today, there is still so much residual carbon in the atmosphere that, um, that, that, that temperatures will continue to rise. And so London, like many other places, has to adapt and has to, um, and has to make change um, to, 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 to deal with, you know, the extremes of heat and extremes of weather and, you know, risks of pests and, and all the other issues that we know are going to come with, with climate change. So uh, Southwark has taken on responsibility for leading that work across London and looking at how London can be more resilient um, and, 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 and do some of the adaption that it needs to do in order to, 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 to manage this. That's the area we're working on. But on, on this, we'll certainly report back to the Commission when there's, when there's news. Okay. Um, can, if I if I if I could uh, push further um, on on the question I I, I asked, um, I'm conscious that Southwark's within the you know top fifteen um, boroughs when it comes to population per head, um, and I can't remember how many boroughs there are in London, thirty something. 
Um, uh, why why Southwark not a part of the Carbon Accounting Task and Finish Group, considering how big we are um, and, and how much we emit um, as a as a um, as a borough? Um, I'm, um, I'm just I'm just curious. I mean because there are there are lots of different groups going on across London at the moment, which are all looking at different aspects of work. And, you know, with the resource we've got, we have to choose which ones we can have the most impact on. Um, it's, it's, I mean, we, you know, we, we could join, we could join the group. There's no, there's no sort of barrier to us doing it. It's a question of if we put resource into that, we, we put less resource into other things because that's where we, we put our time. So I don't, there's no, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's about six or seven boroughs are doing it and all the different pieces of work, it's six or seven boroughs that are doing the work for London. They'll take input from us. So, you know, we will give evidence to them. We will submit information. Um, you know, there is, there is no, no sense in any way we're excluded from it. Um, it's just about, you know, you, you need, just a really practical point, you need officers from, you need officers to sit down and do the work and um you know part of the point of doing it across london is that we share some of that work out and on this this isn't an area where we're mm. we're particularly leading on but it's not it's not because we're not interested in it or or don't think it's important or or, okay. or won't contribute okay yeah sorry uh, yeah the the only reason why i asked was because it, it, it did mention the response that our first meeting had been held yeah. um and i suspect you fed into the meeting some way shape or form um, so the first, yeah. Sorry, Shane. No, I was just going to say the, the first meeting was agreeing the terms of reference. Is basically what they were doing. So okay. it wasn't looking at any of the technical work. It was agreeing terms of reference, agreeing a sort of a timetable and so on. Um, I, I mean, I, I spoke to London councils uh, to, to 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 pull this answer together, and you know they've said they'll keep keep me up to date with what's going on, and I'm happy to keep the commission up to date. Yes, please. That would be helpful. Thank you so much, Chris. Much appreciated. Um, chair you've got on mute thank you um do, do any commission members have any questions or uh, in relation to any of the other responses to um recommendations in the uh, in, yeah in, re, in, re, in response to any of the i guess responses to the recommendations made uh no um the final question i wanted to ask before i move on um, uh, was in relation to the second report on the climate emergency strategy and the response to um, recommendations made in July 2020 on engagement with youth council, youth environment groups, schools generally, and school eco councillors specifically. I note the response and thank you for that. Um, my question was specifically around citizens' juries um, and young people. Um, I know we don't have a citizens' jury set up, um, uh, when it comes to issues around the environment, climate emergency, and I and, and I think it will probably be a quite quite a good idea. Um, are you able to provide an update on what plans Southern Council has in order to set up a citizens jury that's you know long standing um, and that provides you know a shadow scrutiny or scrutiny role um, of some sort to you know either the Environment Scrutiny Commission or other cabinet members, some sort of jury. Um, would be helpful because I know there's all these different groups, young council, young environment groups, but it would be great if we could have at least one young person or two um, from either of those groups I've mentioned before, youth council, youth environment groups or eco councillors sit on the citizens jury. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, yeah, as we say in the response, I mean, engagement with young people is absolutely central to this, um, not just because they have valued, valued views and ideas and so on, but actually, uh, whether we're successful or not in tackling the climate emergency, it, it, it's our young people that are going to be inheriting this from us. And we, we need to, you know, it's absolutely imperative that they're part of the process. Um, citizens juries, uh, we are establishing at the moment. Um, we're currently uh, out to tender um, to find a special company who, who, who has expertise in this to deliver this for us. Um, that, that, that tenders out at the moment and the intention is that they would start work once we publish the climate action plan which is due to come to cabinet in July so they would then be established after that. Um, the citizens juries uh, the, 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 the intention is that what, what, they, what they are is a genuine representation of the borough and so we're not going to be involved in selecting the jurors for it. Um, that's why we're arm's lengthing it to a, to a company that's special in this and they will have to have a selection uh, uh, methodology that that, that 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 selects people at random um, we have said to them 
that it is imperative that that is genuinely reflective of the borough and that's reflective of the borough in terms of age and uh, ethnicity and gender and so on um also uh representative in terms of views that we want to make sure that we don't just have a jury that is full of people who are either passionate about climate change or massively skeptical about climate change we want people who come with a range of perspectives so that it's a genuine representation of the borough and that includes um ensuring that that, that there that there are uh, young people um I, we we're not we're not saying when we're talking about young people we're not intending to have kind of very young people on it we're intending for it to, it's 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 being drawn from people who are 18 and over but that we will have people who are who are who are certainly 18 plus on, on that jury um i i think i think there's uh, a number if, I, if i if i may just on that why why not 18 and under what why not 18 and under mm -hmm. um We've, um, I mean, we've looked at what how other people have done it, and most citizen juries um, operate based on 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 electoral registers and and, and as, as a way of selecting. And so, uh, yes, so so, so we, we've done that. We're, well, we're suggesting that as well. We have asked um, the people. We have asked in the tender document for um, people to come forward with recommendations. And the companies that are bidding for this are people who've done this in many other places. And so we are going to listen to their expertise. And if they come back and say, look, you know, you can really make this work if you have younger people, then, then we should. But the jury is made up of 25 people. And so there's also a risk, I guess, if you have, you know, 25 people with a range of ages and you have a sort of, you know, 12 year old in that group, it, it, it's, you know, it's a different process to manage. Um, so I, my only question would be, is, you know, are, is a citizen's jury the best way of hearing young people's voices to have, you know, a 13 year old, 14 year old on the jury? Or should we be looking at how do we engage young people on this issue uh, more generally? I think the citizen's jury is, is one tool we have, but it's not the only tool. Okay. Um, and that's why, so for example, so we're, We've been thinking about and, and putting together plans for youth engagement, for young people's engagement. Um, and part of that will be working with schools so that we've got young people um, developing uh, tools and things that they can use to enhance the curriculum so that the children can learn more in schools and, 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 and for them to kind of guide the process going forward. So but by not having lots of young people on the jury doesn't mean we don't want to hear from young people. It's about trying to find the best way of hearing different voices in the borough. Sure. Um, but, but Chair, Chair, sorry, I, I take your point on why not younger, and when we get the bids back, um, I'll see. You know, we'll see what 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 people suggest, and we wouldn't. Yeah, if, if there is a good way of doing it that includes younger people, we'd certainly not not be opposed to it. But um, generally, that's not how they've been done. Uh, okay. Uh, before I bring in Councillor Margie Newins and Renata Hamas on that young people point, I think we wouldn't want to stop the creation or development of our own Southwark you know, based Greta Thunberg. I think Greta at the moment is 18. Um, and when she started her work, uh, she was much younger. So we, we, would, we wouldn't want to, you know, lock anyone out of the process who um, no. could meaningfully, you know, contribute to, to challenging and development of policy. Um, Renata. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um... I was just wondering, um, Chris, if there had any, been any thought about engaging with Southwark's young advisors, because they're uh, young people who are engaged with the community and the younger community throughout the borough. They're, they're 16 up. Yeah. Have you thought of, you know, would that be an option? Yeah, th uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Hanvers. Um, yes, we, we have done already. So we've we've had a as part of our engagement that we did um, in the autumn in in the build up to um, publishing the final strategy. We had a session with the young advisors where they gave their feedback and and also some 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 really helpful ideas about you know how we could better engage with young people. And as we've been thinking about what youth engagement looks like, some of that has been drawn from from those conversations. Um, and I think that's the point that I, I, I was probably trying to make to to, to, to uh, uh, the, the chair, which is. We, we, we are really open to trying to find as many ways as we can. Um, I mean, so that, you know, for example, you know, youth parliament, youth councils, those sorts of things, and, and using some of the networks that already exist to, to, to which do engage with young people, to, to use them to try and to try and engage. And yes, young advisors, we have used and they were, they were brilliant. They were really, really, uh, really engaged group of young people and really helpful for us and would certainly go back to them again. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, uh, for your for your detailed answers. Um, and uh, I guess we look forward to, um, to 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 receiving further updates on the point you made in relation to London councils and our sure. engagement with them on carbon. 
um, as well as um, uh, the independent uh, company that will help create um, uh, our citizens jury uh, and, uh, and, and hopefully spark the youthfulness of the group. Um, among other things. So thank you so much. We appreciate no problem, thank you, you taking the time. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, I guess, is the substantive bit of um, uh, today, um, which probably won't take us too long, which is the review of the air quality scrutiny review report and the planning uh, review uh, report, um, which will constitute one report that will go to cabinet. Um, I think, I guess at this juncture, I'll uh, ask if any, uh, any commission members have any comments on the draft so far, um, anything that they would rec want to recommend to change, edit, amend, um, thoughts are welcome. Um, and and I, I will give some of my thoughts in relation to feedback we've received um, on, on these reports um, specifically around on, on planning. Um, yeah, uh, Jeremy Leach. Oh, sorry, sorry, Chair. I thought Leanne was hand up first. I was just scrabbling to find my... my... Oh, no, go, go ahead, Jeremy. I'm fine to go second. <laughs> That's OK. I'm just gathering my thoughts. OK, okay so... Um, Thanks ever so much for that, Chair. So I just got three comments, if that's OK, that um, I just wanted to pick up. And these are absolutely for for consideration by the by the Commission. So they were just um, and it, just one of those things of trying to find the right bit. So um, first of all, in just ahead of recommendation two, there's a sentence which it says these are 60s type visions for six. These are 60s, which I'm assuming means 1960s type visions for city and I that scared me senseless really and I just I just want I just wondered what that meant <laughs> so this is in the LTN's impact for local economy um uh uh re recommendation exactly that yeah um I think I, 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 I think my, my comments on this is that we can we can remove that from the report. Um, I, I don't I don't think it adds or takes away from the substantive of the um, the, the, the recommendation that's being made. So I think I think we can remove that if 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 you're happy and that's also your reckon, recommendation. Yes, yeah, I don't I, I don't think it. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I think reading it on second glance, I, I, I'd agree with you. It, it, it personally, I don't, I don't know the answer to it, but I don't think it needs to to be there. It doesn't change the meaning of the recommendation that's been made. Yeah, and I feel much more comfortable with the fifteen minute city. Um, and my association with sixty city planning is motorways, really. So, sure, that's great. So, um, yeah, agree. So the, okay. the other one was just in relation to recommendation three. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, um, and, and obviously it's fantastic to see the work that Southwark's done on the school streets, but I'd, I just suggested in an, an additional piece of text, which might, um, might look at the whole journey to school um, and, you know, obviously embedding walking and cycling in that. And I'd, I'd proposed a paragraph which talked about, obviously acknowledged the work of school streets, which is brilliant, but just said, you know, in the longer term, I think there's a, t there's a job to do to look at the whole journey to school, um, rather than just the, you know, the relatively isolated intervention around school streets. And I just, you know, I just offer that up to the, and I can pop that, that proposed paragraph, it's a short paragraph into the chat, if that was of help. If, if you could, just so that all members can see it, and if they're happy, um... Uh, we can discuss it and um, approve it um, or disapprove of it. But I'm sure, um, I, think, I think the whole journey is quite important. I think when the, um, the GLA representatives came, um, we had um, a discussion around that. And um, I think the whole journey um, ought to be something that um, we, we look at and not just, I guess, um, um, specific parts of a journey um, when it comes to um, schools. Um, 
Lovely. Okay, well, I've, I've popped that in the chat for um, consideration. And just very okay. quickly. Um, yep, go ahead. Yeah, the final point was in relation to recommendation eight. Um, and in relation to um, point five, an update on charging for parking in the borough, including the development information of the emissions-based charging policy, um, I proposed the potential to add diesel surcharges charging for parking on all council estates. And then the remaining section was already in there. And if this will include reductions in car parking provision. So I will pop in the chat again, the entirety of that proposed wording. But I suppose, okay. I suppose my fear is or has been that um, this whole issue of actually implementing um, the potential new charging structure around residential parking seems to be seems to be not coming forward in a in a way that you know throughout the last two years virtually we've been promised it would do and I'm really worried that aspects of this are being overlooked I, I understand the rationale but for that that may happen but I really would like to see this expressed if it is it's happening but it seems to be by omission a number of the parking recommendations do now seem to be being, being overlooked or kicked into the long grass thank you chair Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to both of um, the uh, suggested changes. Um, and I think we, I have this uh, Commission's blessing in removing the 60s style reference. Uh, Councillor Leanne Vernon. Thanks, thanks very much. Um, I thought the reports were really clear, actually. Um, so thanks for that. Just a, a, um, three points, actually. So the first one's regarding around recommend, recommendation two and um, measurements, could, could we look at the health of people? So can we measure improvements in health after low traffic neighbourhoods have been in, installed? So can we look at, for example, are there lower cases, lower cases of um, asthma or respiratory diseases? Is that something we could potentially put in as a measurement? I know it's more of a long-term thing. I'm just thinking post-COVID, it might be a good working with King's Hospital. We could potentially look at that. Um, yes, I think I, uh, I'd be interested in other people's views. Um, I think my view on that is that I think that will be quite interesting. Um, I think how we amend recommendation two, therefore, would be when evaluating LTNs, the council ought to measure footfall on high streets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, to go, and to go further by measuring um, the health outcomes um, yeah. of, um, of uh, I guess, of, of the Southwark population. Yeah, the, um, the, the reason I say that is because during COVID, there was um, a lot of people noticed that they had less asthma and respiratory diseases and because of, the lower air pollution so it might be worth looking at Tom did you have a comment about that yes, if it's all right to come in there yes Cheryl, please thanks, yes uh, thanks Leanne um, I was just going to suggest it be a completely separate recommendation um, I think if, if the two are merged in together when we get reports back on it one bit or the other might get uh you know less attention so i just wonder whether it should just be a standalone recommendation in the same section uh i think a standalone section would probably make more sense actually because now i think through it um I, I guess the health um the health outcomes uh of of i guess people who live in southwark um it could it could be influenced by ltn in intro interventions it could also be influenced by other things too. Um, Leanne, I'm happy for you to kind of come back, but I'm also conscious of health outcomes in relation to, um, you know, schools being on main roads, etc. Yeah, that's what I, I was think. thinking about as well, yeah. And it's more yeah. of a longitudinal study, I think, as well, but it's something sure. worth looking at and monitoring if we can and with, in, in with, with Kings, for example, or a university. Sure. Uh, I think we can make a recommendation of the sort that says uh, for Southwark to explore um, working with um, health providers such as King's College London um, to uh, monitor over the long term the health outcomes of, uh, of those who live in Southwark. Um, 
it might be a big well. thing, but I think it's worth maybe putting it in. And it is, you know, that's what we want to do ultimately, that low traffic neighborhoods are to improve people's health. Um, so I think that needs to go in. Um, my, my next point is regarding recommendation four. So I think that's brilliant, encouraging more active travel. Uh, we, have we put anything about um, promoting cycling lessons and cycling maintenance, especially amongst women? It's really interesting. I bought a secondhand bike um, a couple of months ago and I was chatting to the guy who he, he, he does like bike maintenance is saying, you know, that you can get free maintenance courses through councils. And I had no idea. So I think it, are we promoting things like that? And I just wanted to put, I can write this in, but just in regards to women. So I was just looking at some research and I, I believe maybe Councillor Burgess is doing research into this already. It says too many women in the UK, UK feel that cycling is not for them. The 2019 Sustrans Bike Life Survey found that 76% of women in the UK never cycle and only 9% of women cycle regularly compared to 21% of men. So there's a big kind of gap and it says women are more likely to cycle if you've got um, kind of distinct kind of cycle path and that little research has been done. So an, 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 a better analysis of differences in the kinds of journeys made by women and men is vital. So given that women are more likely to use several modes of transport and trip chains so and multi-stop journey, journeys, more attention also needs to be paid to linking up safe bike routes with other forms of transport with greater provision of secure and well-lit bicycle parking a transport hub so I was thinking is it worth putting something in about kind of encouraging more women to get on bikes and what okay how yeah. we can do that I can um, put, I can put that uh, in the chat yeah if you if you could put the suggested uh, wording of both of those points in the chat then um the commission can kind of look at those and then um and they then ex accept those yeah so it's encouraging groups that don't normally cycle to cycle and making sure that they're aware of services provided free by the council yeah. and then the last one is re around recommendation six and I think point eight um, and that is about greening the greening program there's not much under under that point do you know the one um, I mean recommendation um, eight number I'm just, I'm just no looking. sorry oh, recommendation yes, yes. six point eight Recommendation 6.8. Yeah, I think it's or 8. about... 8.6. Oh, yes. A borough-wide greenery program yeah. to use native hedges to screen against air pollution, eco ecological planting, and improve the environment. And so is there going to be more around that? Because I'm thinking... <sighs> I was looking into eco-friendly maintenance re regimes and the, what the council do. So, for example, not over mowing um, grassy mounds and verges and really helps to in increase biodiversity. Um, so it might be worth putting that in, making sure that everyone's trained on how to, to kind of not over mow or over... But yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think that's a good point. I think what we could just simply do there is just include that uh, if, if you maybe have some examples that you would want included, then we can include that along with the allotments and wildlife sanctuary, yeah. et cetera, just so that it's much more specific. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll put those some of those points in the chat now. I'll, I'll address something. <laughs> OK, great. On, on finally, sorry, before I go to Renata, Margie, then um, Adele, uh, on encouraging um, cycling, um, maybe on that recommendation we can look at... Um, you know other ethnic groups that probably don't cycle as much such yeah. as you know black other eth other minority ethnic groups um and how we can maybe promote and encourage um them to access council resources and other things that they may not be aware of in order to encourage um some people who um would otherwise cycle if they had more information that, um, that's a really good point and it says that women from ethnic minorities are the least likely to cycle hmm. So I, I think we need to target that group in particular. OK, maybe you can just include that as part okay. of your recommended um, script uh, and then thank you. we'll have a look at that. Uh, Councillor yes. Renata Hanvers, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Now, it's mentioned in point three about um, public transport. And I think it's really important that the transport infrastructure is developed in um, together with low traffic neighbourhoods and school streets. I'm just going uh, really from my own experience that um, 
my children, lots of other children, either walked or they took the bus to school, but there were quite a substantial number who used to drive their children quite a short distance to school. And that was partly because the bus route that served the school often used to terminate before the end of the route, so three bus stops earlier. So the children would be deposited outside the cemetery Mm -hmm. uh, and parents weren't happy with that. So I think it's very important that we work together with the local authority, that we work together with T TFL to iron out um, public transport near schools to encourage that children, if, you know, if they are too far to walk or if, if they haven't got a bike or don't want a bike, don't want to cycle, that they, there are, is sufficient public transport for them to get to school and to get to school on time. Mm -hmm. um, that's my first point. And something, uh, I don't know if it runs anymore, cycling proficiency courses. Now, my other two did that at school and my young students, so I don't know if they don't run anymore or how they were funding, but I think that is um, a really good idea to get um, year five, year six children used to cycling on the road and being confident with cycling on the roads. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone knows how those were funded and if they are still running. I, I, I personally don't know. I did it when I was in year five, but um, I, I, I personally don't know. Um, but that doesn't... It, okay, we, we can look into that. And if it isn't running, maybe we can include that as an example of something that can be in, introduced without changing the substantive recommendation there. On the point- Yeah, yeah, because made, they were made, also available to, for adults too, and that might encourage more people to cycle. Okay, perfect. Um, for recommendation three on your point um, in relation to, um, you know, uh, it being tied into school streets and, uh, and, and access to um, public transport um, for younger people, um, I think what we can do simply with that recommendation is just include uh, two a couple of examples. Um, as I'm conscious that the part A of that recommendation, for, uh, which reads um, that where these schools are main roads, the analysis should identify actions that can be tied in with the low traffic Southwark strategy to reduce traffic on those main roads. Um, I think uh, we we haven't seen the low traffic. Uh, Southwark strategy yet but I think by including some examples we can kind of uh, influence um, some of the points that are you know um, that are made in the low traffic strategy particularly you want around to put my example of where the bus was being turned around before the school in in the chat uh, I think just more ge a more general e example as opposed to one as specific as that okay um, might might be helpful thank you um, Councillor Margie Newans. Thank you. Um, I, I've just been desperately trying to find um, the, I, I thought there was something in there about improving access to cycle training and that sort of thing, but I, possibly that I was reading something else concurrently. Um, so that again is an issue that I've banged on about quite a lot as, as some of you will be aware. Um, so I think that's really important to include. I was going to come back on the Leanne's point with uh, regard to health monitoring, um, which is a great idea. I think one of the you know fantastic things that we've got with the low traffic neighbourhoods that are being uh, funded by the Guys and St Thomas's Trust is that they are giving that twenty percent um, to uh, of the funding. To, well, they they are spending twenty percent of it towards monitoring and evaluation. And I think so. So on one on one in one uh, level, of course, you know, it, it's actually all about health. However, if we're going to be plotting those health outcomes, we need to make sure that we're doing it properly. And what better organisation to work with than Guys and St Thomas's Trust is actually kind of really going to be absolutely focused on that. Um, so I, I, I think maybe. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's necessary to include anything else on that or whether that is is enough for us. I think that that will be um, that will be certainly a very, very good place to start in the sense that they will, you know, they, they will know what they are doing and what they are monitoring. Um, 
I was going to come back also on the point of, of, of um, that's been made by on women's exercise, and this again is 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 you know feeds into definitely making the uh, the case for proper um, make, making cycling more accessible accessible to all you know to all groups who are less inclined to cycle. Um, I read something this week which said that only ten percent of thirteen to sixteen year old girls are getting the recommended amount of day, daily exercise um, and a bike journey to school or a walk to school even um, obviously that can then be a key element of ensuring that population you know through all in, throughout the age range that people are getting that, that recommended daily amount of exercise but you've got to get those people uh, on the bikes in the first place so this feeds into that oh the points about having you know school streets being great but you have to look at the road network to get there as well because it's one thing say you can't park around the school but if you can't uh, walk or cycle there safely either then you know you're you're left with um, a load of cars parked a little bit further away from the school but you're not actually um, delivering the sort of change to school journeys that, that we need to be able that we need to be delivering um, and I was going to throw in a very um, I don't know whether it's something that um, can be added or that's appropriate to add which I've just thought of now actually um, in, in the final in the point point six of recommendation eight as people as we were talking about sort of what could be added there but um, as it's don't know if it's necessarily air quality related, but um, to promote um, composting as well, to slap that in there, because that's a big, that's something again that I bang on about quite a lot, but I think, you know, in terms of um, the environmental impact of coming around and picking up everybody's garden waste, um, which obviously is, is, is absolutely has to happen, but if you can gradually sort of, you know, transition towards situation where people are naturally disposed to start um, to, to start composting uh, that that also I think would be a of a significant environmental impact great um, those are all great points Margie thank you so much I think on the first point before I come to Adele um, which is uh, conducting a longitudinal study with guys St Thomas's trust uh, charity I think what we should probably do is um, Whilst mentioning King's College London, Guy St. Thomas's, we should just say, we should say working with uh, the, you know, the likes of King's and Guy yeah. St. Thomas's Trust and others, because it may well be that we find out Imperial have, you know, this world renowned respiratory uh, uh, division that could work with us here um, in looking at that. So we don't want to kind of restrict ourselves too much but I think I think that point is really well made so we'll use Kings and Guy St Thomas's Trust as a, as um as institutions we could work with for example. Chair can I come back very quickly on that I just I, I think it's I, I just think it's um it, in terms of how we put that in in the recommendations I think it's important that we don't uh set us at ourselves a bar of reinventing the wheel um, I think that's that's important. So I think it's yeah, absolutely be be you know let's be a little bit general about it, but equally that it shouldn't be sort of you know that that, that we're obliged to to do X Y Z and uh, when when we know we know very well that other people are already doing that. So okay. so just to leave ourselves that sort of um, that that flexibility, I think is a good idea. Okay, fine. That sounds good. Um... And then we can, we can add as an example composting to the uh, example bit that we mentioned for Leanne. And I think Leanne's already added the, the girls section to her recommendation on cycling. Um, so women and girls instead of it just being women. Um, but thank you for all those points. Uh, Councillor Del Morris. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I'm not quite sure where it fits in, but um, I'd like to know whether we are doing any kind of surveys or studies or, uh, or comparisons uh, on on car not on just not just on car use but car ownership and it comes back to this idea of you know turning parking spaces into pocket parks or replacing them with cycle hangers and things like that we have a major issue in borough and bankside ward where we have issued more parking permits already than there are parking spaces available uh, so every time that one is taken out, uh, it causes problems. And 
making it more expensive will not necessarily solve that problem because that means that those people who can afford it will afford it. But I just wondered if, you know, when we're looking at the, the impact, for example, of the LTNs and, and, and various other impacts, whether anybody is actually having a look at the data on who's got parking permits, you know, do we have fewer people applying for them than we had before? Are people handing them back? Are people actually giving up cars? You know, are the LTNs not only making people make fewer car journeys, but actually making them think, crikey, mm -hmm. it's just not worth the aggravation. I can't get around anywhere. I might as well just use public transport, mm -hmm. walk, cycle or, or, or whatever. So I was just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, uh, other than, because I know on terms of the LTNs, they're looking it will be it will be traffic officers looking mm -hmm. at it from a kind of traffic officer point of view and and counting car numbers and things like that but i think there's a whole bit that we're missing about car ownership mm -hmm. and about monitoring and measuring whether or not any of these uh, uh, initiatives that are being brought forward are are actually making people ditch their cars uh, and so i don't know quite where it would fit in but I would like to see analysis of 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 those impacts in that particular aspect of it as well as whether people are healthier whether people are cycling more etc cetera, etc cetera, whether yeah, the shops are doing better I, I think what we should do is weave that into recommendation eight which um mentions that this commission therefore recommends that once the LTM review is completed, that more time is given over to respond to each of the commission's previous recommendations and that officers and cabinet leads return to the commission with a detailed operational plan outlining how low traffic Southwark will be delivered and provide a full response to the below. And then there's eight different ones. Um, you probably see there's one on number four says Southwark adopts a maximum charge for bike hubs and hangers that ensures that cheap is cheaper than car parking by space. I think we could just add a seventh one that says that data is provided to um, find out um, car ownership across the whole borough. Thank you, are Chair. You, are you happy? It's, I think the Commission is happy with that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll run through all of these from top to bottom. Um, I'm conscious that we have um, a break. Um, so uh, let's let's have a five a five minute break and then we'll come back and then um, we'll run through these from top to bottom. Um, Leanne, I'm not sure if you had a point, but yeah, we we'll, we'll run through these from top to bottom. Um, Brilliant, and, that's and, good. <laughs> and yeah, then we'll go to the planning one. Um, thanks. See you in five minutes, everyone.
Hi, everybody. Hopefully you're, um, you're rested. Mm, I think everyone's back. Uh, just wait for Tom Flynn. Excellent. Uh, oh, thanks for the information, Jeremy, on this uh, on this car ownership statistic. I think that saves officers from from um, I guess trying to develop information when it's already available. Thank you, um, Councillor Del Morris. Yes, you would see Jeremy's posted a link uh, from DVLA that gives a breakdown of car ownership by ward and postcode. Yes, so I suppose really it's is anybody taking the time to to yeah. put them together and make the analysis of, of yeah. you know and, and also actually on the parking permits front and I don't know how we tackle it but I know historically there have always been some people who have applied for parking permits which they somehow managed to sell to other people uh, for example and I don't know how um I don't know how we find we've been able to get with you know with clamping down on things like that um mm -hmm. but yeah you just get to get a general sense and, and looking at the car ownership figures and, and actually comparing where, where we've got different um initiatives whether where that where we believe that that has been a contributory factor to people ditching their cars very helpful um if if if, if this won't be a hassle are you able to maybe just give it we know where it will go in the recommendation slot it'll just be one of the eight subsections on the last recommendation if you're able to add some form of wording that we can maybe approve as a commission a commission if that's okay oh you're on mute oh yes yeah okay. uh, yeah 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 I'll, I'll, I'll give me a couple of minutes to work on that um, okay thank yeah. you uh councillor renata hamvas so, um, something I want to raise about um, parking permits and car own ownership. Do we have any scale of parking permits where we where a single household of related individuals has more than can they have multiple parking permits? For the same household. Yes, they can. Now, I think I'm just wondering. I think it's up. I think it's up what to members four. think that if we had a sort of a. a a scale where you if you had two or three cars for the same related households rather than sharing your vehicles that the parking permit would become more expensive mm, that seems that seems eminently sensible um yes maybe we can make a recommendation to the effect that maybe follow well not recommendation in itself but as an example of the points in the last recommendation about um, officers looking at making car um, permit ownership um, more expensive, where there are um, there are more than two cars or something of that sort. Renata, maybe you can you can also. If there are some. multiple vehicles in the same related household, I think that's fine. So, so not where you had, say, three nurses who work shifts living in a in a HMO, that sort of situation. But if you have a family and parents and other offspring that they all run cars, because there mm -hmm. are situations in the, the, the area where I live in where you can see and you know that there are three or four cars for one household. Okay, fine. I think, yes, if you could just add... Very, one line very shortly um that would that would be great and then we can approve those all at the end and i also want to follow and i'm just wondering has it been looked within our borough whether or not uh well i i'm, I'm assuming it is that car ownership is higher in areas with the poorest public transport mm -hmm. that that you know that the, the p-tail rating if if that is directly related to levels of car ownership? I feel like there's something in the report in relation to PTAL. Um, I'll come back to you on that point. Councillor Del Morris, before we go on to looking at all of the amendments. 
Uh, yeah, just just on that, um, it, it might be it, it, that's probably quite an easy thing to do in terms of parking permits that, that are issued because we had that and it's in the papers somewhere that report that we got from Dale Foden last time about the number of parking permits <laughs> issued per um, per ward. Uh, so that that that's kind of gives a bit of an indication, I think, because uh, I think we all have a sense of, I mean, obviously the Borough and Bankside's got the highest PTAR rating and uh, some parks uh, have got a, a much lower one. So it should be quite easy to make some kind of um, assessments on that, just based on that information. Yes, okay. Good. Um, Councillor Mark and Ewans. And then we'll, I think after this, uh, I think we can go to just uh, going through the amendments and recommendations from top to bottom for air quality. Thank, thanks, Chair. Um, I was just going to say as well, I, I meant to, it's on my list of things I wanted to raise earlier. I, I think we, it's probably as well to have a point somewhere specifically stating that we continue to lobby central government and uh, TFL for improved public transport because that is somewhere where, which we you know we, we really we really suffer and it you know I think ultimately um, there has there is a you know we have to recognize that we are I think one of the very few uh, public transport systems in a capital city certainly probably the only one in Europe and one of the few in sort of the developed world where mm -hmm. we receive in general no direct subsidy um, for the public transport system of a capital city. Um, I think it's a really, really important part of any um, low traffic uh, infrastructure is to have good public transport and we need to sort of specifically state that we have a function lobbying for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, but this might have been referenced in a previous um, commission uh, recommendation. Now, if it isn't, I think we can find a way of weaving it in. If it is, I think we can just follow that point up. Um, I, I think, I'm almost certain that it's been included in pre a previous recommendation, but I might, I might be wrong. Um, but we can check that before, uh, um, before this... Yep. Judy? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, someone froze. I'm not sure it's me or you. or um, Yeah. So um, as far as I recollect, um, in, the previous in the previous report, we did have a recommendation on lobbying the GLA um, around various different things. But, I, but I'm not sure if we did have something about lobbying central government about transport. Jeremy might have a better memory about that. But um, I think it was more lobbying the TFL rather than central government for extra funding, which is, I think, the point that Council Newens is actually making. Mm -hmm. I think so both. I think both. Okay. I mean, okay. we need to lobby whoever we can lobby to get yeah. better public transport because it could yeah. certainly be improved. I think that goes... Okay. I think the point is well made. So I think we can include government. Um, and, and effectively also anything that we lobby, I mean, TfL ultimately also needs money from somewhere and that yeah. government is a key part of that. So it's it's one and the same in so many ways. Sorry, I interrupted, sorry, Chair. No, it's fine, it's okay. I think I think your point's well well made. So we'll, um, we'll include something to that effect. Um, it, it wouldn't be unhelpful maybe if you could just include one line uh, that we could include um, in the report. I'm just trying to find the most relevant place for it. Um, I guess actually um, in recommendation eight as another point, given that it's in relation to um, low traffic Southwark. Thank you, Margie, much appreciated. Um, Councillor Del Morris. Yes. Sorry, just two very quick ones. I'm just looking at um, this recommendation 15. I think it's one of Jeremy's ones. Slightly nervous about the diesel cars issue because we have got a lot of residents who are uh, less well off who have diesel cars, who are all told to buy diesel cars by one of our governments somewhere along the way uh, and now, uh, you know, and can't afford uh, not to 
Um, and, you know, whilst I think we should be getting everybody out of their cars, we just need to be a little bit careful, I think, about making sure that we're not disadvantaging more significantly some of our more disadvantaged communities. Because, uh, you know, as I said earlier, those who can pay will pay uh, for things like this. So I just think we need to be slightly careful about that. Um, and then just on the on the transport thing, has has Southwark done any looked at all at things like um, uh, on demand buses? So I know I think it was either Sutton, I think it was Sutton Council did a trial for TfL, and I know they tend to be a bit more expensive. Um, but that you know that idea of sort of app based on demand buses, you know, maybe for certain areas of the borough where uh, you know it's more. I was going to say rural because you know mm-hmm. Dulwich is Dulwich to me is rural compared to my ward. Uh, but um, do you know what I mean? You know, have we? Do you know? If, does anybody know if the council has done any investigation, asked any questions, whether that's been raised at all to look at to look at on-demand buses in Southwark? I, I'm personally not aware. Um, but maybe that's maybe not something we include in the recommendation, but something we can maybe follow up with officers on. Is that okay? Perfect. Um, in terms of uh, Jeremy's recommendation, um, I'm not sure what other commission members think. Um, Renata did mention that you, it, diesel cars will be picked up by ULES uh, in any case. Um, and so, I mean, I, 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 think, I think we can... To, to that effect, um, uh, I guess p- politely, you know, de- decline the, the recommendation um, unless anyone else felt very strongly about it, um, and the commission was all agreed. I think the commission ought to be agreed on any form of wording um, uh, before a recommendation is formally approved. But um, I'm happy to take the uh, views of others. Uh, Jeremy, I'll give you the, the right to reply. Yeah, I just, I mean, so I think previously, thank you, Chair, I think previously what we'd said was there's a range of possible potential interventions, you know, one of which might be a diesel surcharge, one of might be emissions car parking, as Councillor Hamvas has said earlier, one might be surcharging for additional vehicles. So I think that, I think that's, you know, I'm not suggesting which is which. I think the great fear is that none of those are going to come forward. And and I think that, you know, I totally understand your point about equity and that's completely fair, Adele. But I'm just really, I'm just really worried unless we state, re- restate recommendation 15, this is getting lost. And my worry, and, and that's, that's my concern for trying to emphasise it in this year's report. That's, that's the only motive. I see. Councillor Del Morris, are you? Um... I, I, I'm going to let others comment if they want to. Okay. Um, Councillor Morgan Newins. Thanks. Um, so this, uh, I, I wonder whether another possible parameter that you could think of charging um, of, of, of having an increased uh, resident permit charge related to is actual size of vehicle. Um, because in, I mean, one of, again, one of the huge environmental problems that we've got is that the efficiency of the overall fleet is actually falling since 2016, because we, um, our cars are getting bigger and bigger. Um, I don't like using the, uh, well, mine, mine certainly isn't, but uh, collectively, I read actually that, that for every, every, every electric car, new electric car sold, 17 SUVs are sold. And actually taking into account, you know, Adele's point about not obviously not wanting to penalise somebody for having a car that is, is, you know, is older, although in some respects that will uh, be penalised anyway through the ULES. But I think maybe if there is a way of actually focusing on vehicle size and charging more, which, which makes perfect sense because you're taking out more space. That's kind of the point. Um, I remember having a discussion with the previous uh, cabinet member responsible for the climate emergency and, and uh, transport, Richard Livingston, specifically pushing this point. And he said to me that he, he wasn't sure that the data 
is automatically available about vehicle size. I don't know. So it might be difficult, but I think we should find a way of doing it because I think that is probably one of the most significant things that we should be looking to discourage. Okay, um, I know the point. I think this is my view. Um, I think recommendations we make ought to um, be steeped in the information and evidence that we've received over the course of the, the municipal year. And uh, I'll be a bit nervous in making a recommendation without, I guess, it being uh, backed up with some sort of evidence that we've received. Um, is the first point I'd make. And I know um, there's different, you know, bodies of evidence in relation to all of these things, bigger cars, it might be electric, you know, families, etc. But I just, just constitutionally, I know Julie will correct me that just uh, when we make recommendations, it ought to, you know, be informed by some sort of information that we've received from people. Um, so, Margie, on that basis, um, I, I feel a bit nervous, um, including that as a recommendation, just as a point of principle. Um, and uh, the same would probably apply to, to, to Jeremy's point, unless we can point specifically to some sort of um, info that we've received from either the GLA. And I know we weren't able to get that many people to come to the commission this year, just because of how short it was, but I, I wouldn't want us to kind of overstep what we uh, we're, we're meant to do as a commission. And uh, that's not me trying to knock down any recommendations. It's just that I, I guess I want the public to be able to see that decisions we make is, you know, based on some sort of, you know, uh, feedback. Yes, Julie. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that um, in terms of like, it, it definitely is a good practice to base your recommendations on the evidence. Um, so in terms of the emissions based parking, I mean, you, you definitely have tried to track that. So I can I can see that Jeremy's point about emphasizing the importance of that would be based on the on the evidence. Um, but sort of taking you know that that point you're making about not having examined necessarily all the details. Okay, thank you. Um, I think on, on the basis of what Judy just said and in regards to Jeremy's um, recommendation, does the commission have any issue with the recommendation made. If you do, please tell me. If you don't, and there's a point of contention, then we'll we'll have to let this one slide just because we won't be all on the same page effectively. Um, Councillor Tom Flynn. Um, I don't think I need to say anything after that. To be honest, I was trying to suggest a way forward, but I think we're getting there one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, uh, Councillor Renata Hamber. Sorry, I've just put it in the chat. I was thinking of a way that could encompass the size and the polluting level of the vehicle is maybe linking it to the road tax. And that because that's been determined, hasn't it, in terms of how polluting, how large the vehicle is? Uh, yes, I, I, I know the point, but um, in relation to the point I just made earlier, I'm just mindful of going, uh, you know, making recommendations that aren't rooted in anything we've heard or uh, as evidence. Um, Councillor Del Morris, and then I think we'll go through the commission, uh, the, the recommendations from top to bottom. I, I was just wondering whether or not to kind of soften the blow of that recommendation, as it were, um, it could be applied going forward, uh, to, you know, I, in other words, when people change their car or, or, or apply for the first time for a parking permit, um, uh, you know, rather than, I'm, I'm just slightly nervous about people who already own cars suddenly being hit by the ULEs, by uh, increased congestion charge, uh, by all of these things, uh, and then getting hit by a massive parking uh, increase as well. Um, or whether you think it just wouldn't be effective enough to only do it with people, as I say, people who either changed their car for, a, for a, a new car, so they knew in advance that if they changed their vehicle, they'd have to pay more, um, or if they applied for the first time, as opposed to people who are renewing. But maybe that's just weakening it too much. I, I think Jeremy's been quite clear as to why this has been recommended and what the purpose is. Um, Councillor Margie Newand, um, before, if, if we're not, I think 
I think Adele's suggesting that we kind of soften this. I, I don't think uh, Jeremy wants this to be softened just because of it, it takes away from the substantive of what we're trying to achieve above and beyond um, what we've recommended in the past and what we're trying to really drive at. Um, yeah, Margie Newens. Um, I was going to come back and say, so, so I think one of the difficulties that we have, and this coming back comes back to the size issue, one of the difficulties that we have is that there are going to be a tremendous amount of um, cars which are about twice the size that they need to be, which are still ULES compliant because they will be, be newer and they may be owned by slight, slightly wealthier people. Um, and I, I appreciate the difficulty because unfortunately we're doing this a little bit on, on this particular issue, a little bit on the hoof now. I appreciate the difficulty of uh, pinning down at this stage exactly an exact wording of a recommendation um, on how to approach these sort of, you know, uh, graduated charging depending on the kind of vehicle. But can I suggest that we perhaps take a little bit of time over the next week to look into what is actually uh, possible and available to us? If we, I mean, can we somehow word the, um, the 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 recommendation here in such a way as to sort of a little be a little bit more sort of in, encompassing uh, the possibility of uh, pursuing these where these sort of the, 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 these graduated charging if, if uh, on on the following criteria so em emissions fuel uh size and that we wish to look into ways of and I'm kind of trying to formulate the phrase here, but we so we 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 uh, we we pick we pick the criteria, and we're going to look into ways of um, introducing some sort of uh, graduated parking charges uh, related to those uh, th those criteria. Um, I, I yeah, I mean some sort of wording like that um, that that we could then go away and um, see whether it's possible. Okay, fine. Uh, so this is my, this is, I thank you for that. That's very helpful. And um, this, that's the last point I'm taking on this. Um, I think what we're going to do is um, for the one on uh, size of vehicles, etc. cetera, um, I think we can ag agree as a commission that we get some, I guess, evidence on this from somebody external uh, that we hear and we're able to ask questions on, etc., and then make a recommendation the next municipal year if, 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 possible because I, I i just fear that um uh, we'll, we'll 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 otherwise just be making recommendations based on our own evidence without being able to question it properly in the way that we normally do um on recommendation 15 um suggested by jeremy it doesn't seem as if we're ag agreed on 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 on, on the wording at, at the very most um so, so I would, I, I think we should park this one for now, also, um, and we can also always revisit it. Um, just, just that, just because we're not all on the same page on that, um, and I think in order for any recommendation to be made, we all need to be on the the, the same page. And I think maybe if it was uh, sent earlier, and I know this isn't your fault, Jeremy, uh, maybe more time and consideration could have been given to this. But I'm just mindful of the time and how long we could spend on this. But that doesn't take away from your uh, ambition and recommendation, but I think it's definitely something that we can just revisit um, at the next municipal year, Jeremy. Um, thank you so much, Chair. I'll be really quick. Recommendation 15 is from last year's air quality report. Oh, I see. So, so all, all, in all of this, all I've tried to do is to try and emphasize in this year's report, the significance of focusing on that because it appears to have been avoided. That's all I'm, that's all I'm trying to do. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, but yes, let's um, let let. I think this uh, we're not agreed on the, the exact word, and so we can come back to this um, at the next municipal year. Um, <laughs> Margie, so, sorry, uh, I think I think, but it, it it's in it's in last year's report anyway, right? Is 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 that the exact wording of it last year in, in, in last year's report, Julie? 
Yeah, so in last this report, it definitely had that we would have an admissions-based parking policy. Uh, that was a recommendation. So, but what that didn't do is it didn't go into any details, for example, how many vehicles or, um, so yeah, it was an admissions-based parking policy. That was the, the, the um, Okay, so we could. So, I was, and also, then it could be carbon emissions. It could be NOx emissions. It don't, yeah. you know, we, and actually, that, which is why people got the diesel. Okay, carbon, so, 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 so there are a number of different ramifications there. So therefore, I would. That's why I would support adding an additional possibility, which is charging on the basis of size. Um, and if uh, we add I, that in, then I, 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 I think we need to crack on with it on the basis that it was in last, uh, one of last year's yeah. recommendations. Okay, fine. So <laughs> I think now that's clearer. Sorry, that was my, 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 my folly. I think we can just recommend that, therefore, that emphasis needs to be made to uh, emissions-based, um, uh, emission-based policy that uh, looks at the parameters of size, fuel, multiple vehicles per household, etc. I think that's, that's fine. Um, and sorry, it was my omission. I I wasn't I wasn't of the understanding that it was from a previous report um, of which evidence had been made. So I think something of 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 that choice of wording should be fine, Julie. Yeah. So I mean, if you just restated the importance of having uh, an emissions based policy, and then you said that you would like the policy to consider all those issues, that means that then when that policy comes back, you've asked officers to consider that and then you'll have another chance to scrutinise that as well, hopefully. Fine, fine. Thank you. I think we got there in the end. Um, and I think that was my um, my folly. Sorry, everybody. Um, so <laughs> from top to bottom <laughs> and approving the recommendations uh, in response in relation to air quality. I think the first one was um, that Jeremy said more generally and in the longer term strategies are required to build on school streets and ensure that walking and cycling are increasingly built into the whole journey to school as part of the movement plan and that a number of and proportion of driven journeys are continually being reduced. I, I'm, I'm happy with that choice of wording. Um, everybody else? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, the second um, amend amendment um, was the update on charging for parking, an update on charging for parking in the borough, including development and implementation of emissions-based charging policy, diesel surcharges, charging for parking on council estates, and if this will include reductions in car parking provision. Uh, is that okay by the whole commission? I think you've had uh, 45 minutes or so to review it. Um, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Leanne's recommendation, which was in relation to recommendation two, that LTNs conduct longitudinal studies with King's College London um, and all um, Guy St. Thomas's Trust charity and others in looking at longer term impact of LTNs on health, health of residents. Um, I think I've captured Margie's amendment um, in that, which will um, form recommendation two. All good? Cool. Um, I think the next one's recommendation four, um, and it was in relation to cycling. Um, I think the recommendation there was that uh, more is done to promote cycling lessons and cycling maintenance, especially amongst women, girls, and those from black, Asian minority ethnic communities. Is that okay? Okay, please, please do pull me out if there isn't something, because once this is approved... Well, yeah, no, so that's part <laughs> of it. And also to look, do some kind of analysis of, of existing cycling infrastructure in the borough. Yes, and make oh, sure sorry, I missed that. So yes, so that's something that... That's the bottom, that's the yes. last, yeah. Uh, yes, I've seen it. In relate, and then it you can shorten of... it, you could, yeah. Okay, it. but as long as it doesn't take away from the substantive of that point of making analysis, I think should be fine. In, in terms of the, the, the wording that we'll produce for the final report, which is conduct an analysis of gender and other inequalities to inform existing cycling infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Okay, fine. Um, 
just yeah i just want to make sure we're getting this right that's what i'm going through from top to bottom um uh, recommendation 6.8 that we consider as an example um at the bottom of it um that we create a green and more diverse ecology the council should consider more eco-friendly maintenance regimes to estates green areas and walkways e.g a reduction in mowing of grassy banks and verges and also including margie's point in relation to uh, composting Okay. Um, I've just you, I've just included an example of Earth Cycling Sussex. You might want to look into them. They do a really good job of recycling um, waste and turning it into compost. Okay. Yeah, we can put that as a bracket after the example for Margie, which is councils to look into turning green waste into compost, and then example Earth so Earth Cycle in Sussex is a good example. Good. Um, Councillor Del Morris, I think your point on car ownership, given that we have the data from DVLA, I think we wanted to go a bit further by saying that that data is uh, used to, sorry, if you can help me out, Councillor Del Morris, I think you actually posted it. Oh yeah, um, an update on how initiatives, yeah, to use the data to update us on how initiatives to promote walking and cycling or reduce car journeys on LTNs have it impacted on car ownership in the bar is that correct okay yes yeah, sorry so, i'm just trying to find it now i see that yeah, jeremy think, has got lots of responses to it but i still think that we could uh, i wouldn't do any harm to get some do some surveys and get or get some real data uh so that data okay fine um okay good and then What, what did we say? I, I think Councillor Renata Hanvas uh, about single households and more than one parking permit. I think we said something about multiple use, multiple, uh, I can't remember the exact wording. Um, I put a Where a single household has more than one park. Oops, sorry. That where a single household has more than one parking, per parking permit that a second and subsequent parking permits are more expensive than the first is that okay okay is everyone else happy with that uh count uh, jeremy leach sorry, sorry. I'm, a I'm really sorry but this is where i caused all the confusion because the point that councillor hamvas has made was covered in that recommendation 15 Got it. on the previous Got it. I just wanted to say that that's a, in my view, that's a really good point, but there was an allusion to that in the previous year's report. Okay, so we could just say that an up that an update is provided um, that uh, that emphasis, no, that we recommend that an emphasis needs to be made on having an emission based policy that looks at the parameters of size, fuel, multiple vehicles per household, and other things. Is that okay? Okay, fine. I think that covers the point that you made, Jeremy, as well. Um, I think that's it on air quality. If everyone's happy, um, we'll, uh, well, we'll we'll um, update the report um, and make sure that all of those are included before it goes to cabinet on air quality. Thank you, everyone, and sorry for bearing with me for fifteen minutes, not knowing what I was doing. Um, <laughs> planning. Uh, uh, the planning report. Um, now, I we we gave we we sent this to uh, officers. Um, officers came back with some uh, comments um, on, I guess, some of the recommendations that we had made. Um, I guess before I actually, I'll run you through what some of their points were on this. Um, I had a view on, you know, uh, on, on what they said um, on, on a couple of points, but if does anyone have any specific points that they would um, like to make on the planning report? Yes. Councillor Del Morris. Yeah, it's just a, a technical uh, a passive house is is a particular uh, system, um, uh, and it's it, it's passive cap, capital P uh, passive without any house. The German H A U S. Uh, I'll write it down in the chat. But it's, it's just that it's um, 
passive house isn't isn't a oh okay it, it, yeah. it's a it's a specific thing yeah uh, rather right. than rather than a description descriptive okay. thing so okay. i'll just write i'll write how to to do it julie um, yeah, okay. apologise. Yeah, no, that's all right. It's not your fault. I think I got it wrong in a booklet about planning that I wrote. Uh, I don't know where my brain was at, but yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's easy I to know that. But yeah, I, I'll correct that in the report. No problem. Fine. Uh, any other members' points on the planning and environment scrutiny report? Okay, so let's go. <laughs> we'll go through. Um, the, the points that were made. Um, so on recommendation, uh, I'll pull this up, please. On recommendation three, um, oh yes, Judy, if you could, if you, if Judy, you could kindly maybe put these in the chat, then I think that probably will probably just make it a bit easier. Um, rather than... So, Chair, I put the, the latest one that was emailed, which is a, quite a good summary, potentially. Yes. Uh, Right. I'm not sure it's all come out. I'll just double check. Uh, I think the last line should read uh, as no comment to be made. I think what some of the officers did with this anyway, when they responded, when we sent it to them for any comments, is that they they respond they responded to kind of where they were were on the recommendations made, which um, I guess is helpful in parts. But to be honest, I um, uh, think for some of some of their responses, uh, I think it would still need some work to kind of give us the information that we really need. Um, Chair, yes. uh, so um, I don't know if everybody else has lost that the, on that very last bullet point. Um, we seem to have not got the whole the whole sentence. Ah, okay. Um, um, but but also just on that um, meeting net zero. Uh, so I said I asked specifically Simon Bevan. Um, at what point do we think we won't be taking any money? Uh, from, uh, to get to put into the carbon offset fund, um, and and I think I remembered him saying quite specifically that it it would be very difficult, and it because we have um, we have high housing uh, delivery demands and uh, and and reduced or or a low amount of, of available land, and so therefore things were going to go up, and as long as things had to go high, that that they couldn't be made um, net zero carbon. Mm -hmm. And so, but I think you know. It, I mean, yes, we've got we've got housing numbers to, to meet and targets, obviously that aren't even set by us. But is is there something that we should be saying about how about how the the council should be looking at future developments? Um, and should we be should we be looking at density in a different way? Should we be being more creative? Should we be you know, or should we be asking the question whether there are different ways to look at delivery that would help us to achieve those uh, those targets? Maybe is that a better way of phrasing it? Perhaps. Uh, yes, I think so. And I think when you made the point, um, I, I agreed with you that because of delivery of cancel homes um, or um, of 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 our cancel targets, uh, um, our targets of housing. That we shouldn't that shouldn't be a reason for us to set aside our ambitions of meeting net zero carbon by 2030. And so recommendation one still kind of maintains that, I guess, um, that ambition of ours anyway, regardless of what I think the I think it, I think that was his view. Um, but that doesn't stop us from as a commission still pushing them to be ambitious, which is ensuring that the new South plan and associated planning documents accord with the climate strategy by 2021. 
by having policies in place that number one meets the net zero carbon um, target by 2030, um, which is uh, which is um, our recommendation. But is, but isn't there something in it about encouraging uh, develop uh, developers? Uh, and indeed with our own development, actually looking at different ways to help us meet those policies rather than uh, say coming to, co I mean, you sat on the main planning committee, Jason, you know exactly what happens. We've got all the policies and they turn up and they say, oh no, we can't do that because it's X high, you know, it's 43 stories and you can't make it carbon neutral. So here's a million quid to go into a carbon offset fund. Um, and I just wonder if we, should, we could be pushing back or we, or we as, a, as a group uh, should be somehow pushing, just strengthening that a little bit that we're, that we're pushing back on that, uh, that, that we're not really satisfied with that kind of yeah, but answer. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a bit too strong. Mm, I, don't, I don't think it's strong. I'm just trying to work out how we weave it into a recommendation. I know we have a recommendation on com the completion certificate and building controls and et cetera. Um, and I know that uh, there's obviously reference to the passive house standards for our own council, new council homes being achieved um, for the council to move towards net zero carbon with um, offsetting for private development. Um, but I'm just trying to work out in my mind where this would sit and I can't, I can't completely uh, reconcile that. Um, but anyway, um, we can come we can come back to that point because I, I don't I, I don't I don't think is what do you do you have a recommend do you have a recommendation that you'd like to be included somewhere in the recommendations you've made or is this something that or are you thinking of I something I, ha I haven't really thought thought through what the specific recommendation uh, would be and, and as I say maybe maybe this isn't the place for it maybe it's something to just pursue more generally uh, you know as a council or, or 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 maybe just park it to sort of next year's commission or whatever um, but, but it, it is just that, that it's the kind of it's the proactive not reactive yeah. uh, approach and, to planning. And I think that, yeah I think on that point I think the best way forward is for once I'm presenting this to cabinet um, including that as one of the points I make um alongside the recommendations that we've made if that sounds sensible yes thank okay, you okay good um so you would see the points that judy's uh paste pasted now i'm going to go through this quite carefully because some of these are oh, are kind of teetering on the on the edge of amending our recommendations which I don't think should 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 be done um, because that's not the place um, for officers when it comes to our commission on um, the point on the new Southwark plan our recommendation on uh, recommendation three says that we require all development to contribute to the development of decentralized energy networks including by connecting them to where there is um, one in proximity to development now, um, I know the points they make, which is that um, uh, that um, the concerns over the need for alterations for the proposed new South plan are just significant changes required, et cetera, et cetera. Then it so then goes and say, in particular, enforcing targets on embodied carbon. This will be undertaken an early review of the new South plan under review policy page sixteen P sixty nine. Now the the P sixty nine. Point, I've looked at that policy and it, and, and it relates specifically to the development that is a made, ma it refers to major development. So I'm conscious that things that just fall under the category of major development, which in my mind is probably less um, developments that are less than 150 homes or so, I wouldn't want them to, I, I wouldn't want this recommendation not to apply to, you know, um, developments that just fall under the major development so I think we can we can still keep this recommendation um, with the view of it being applicable to um, as many um, uh, yeah being applicable to developments that aren't just major now I, I think all might be a stretch because having decentralized energy networks for like 10 homes 
isn't practical or feasible, but I just wouldn't want us to miss out on the uh, the other element or what the, the, the element just below major developments. Um, so um, I think I think we can just we can amend this recommendation to say that um, that we require all development to contribute to the development of decentralized energy networks, including by connecting them where there is one in proximity to the to ma major um, ma major development and and development that is um, I can't think of the exact wording, but development that is. Um, also of sig significance, um, because I know that the choice of the word major is very specific and planning to homes on over 150, but there's also significant applications that are, I don't know, between 100 and 150, but I just don't want us to exclude that. Um, does anyone have any specific comments on that? Yes, Councillor Del Morris. I was wondering, could you phrase it in such a way as uh, we recommend that all developments, regardless of size, are encouraged to, do you know what I mean? So, so, so you know, to, to, to sort of bring the lower ones in, uh, but acknowledging that if it's literally yeah. five, yeah. Imagine think, if it's literally five homes, you could probably do solar panels and a wind thing and all sorts of stuff. I think, it, I think that, that seems sensible to me, encouraging. Um, is good because then we, I guess, wouldn't encourage. Well, we, yeah, I think encouraging is fine. Yeah, encourage on all developments. Yeah, but with I a very specific, you know, but and and maybe something like, um, but more specifically with larger developments or, or do you know what I mean? If we could say something about about it, it being mandatory almost for the larger developments, but encourage for all of them. I don't know quite yeah, how. That sounds. Haven't, that, haven't quite got the wording because we can't yeah, actually I, say mandatory. Um, no, I, I get I, use that I, word. Yeah, I get I get the sentiment of it though, and we'll 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 come up with some words to that effect. Um, on recommendation recommendation two, um, there was a specific comment about completion certificates, um, um, and it was noted that building control will need to review the feasibility of this. I, I, I don't, I, yeah, I think the recommendation still stands as being okay because um, they can look at the feasibility of it. But I think we, we, we think that a completion certificate based on the evidence we heard from, um, from Mina Hassman um, and her colleague um, uh, is still being relevant. I think they can look at the feasibility, but I think it's still important for off the back of the evidence we heard for this still to remain unless anyone disagrees. Um, recommendation three, I think we've looked at that um, already. Um, recommendation four, I, I also I also personally think that this can be kept in. Um, I know that they, they say that amendments have been made to the New South Wales plan to allow GLA on circular economy principles. Um, but I think we've asked for a specific date of by 2021 specifically, which isn't addressed. So um, we can keep that. On recommendation five and six, plan and adopt the energy hierarchy, retain, refurbish, reuse, reclaim, manufacture, remanufacture, recycle in the new Southwark plan for both development of our own council home building program. Um, I think that can also be kept. I mean, I, I do note that this is being explored, but I think this even gives them more reason to explore it even further um, in the review of the new Southwark plan. Um, and if that is explored, then great, that recommendation is achieved. But if it isn't, then uh, we can hold the feet to, we can hold their feet to the, the fire on that specific point. Um, recommendation seven and eight, no comment to be made. We have not moved on from this point and we need to consider it in our work going forward. I think that, that gives us very clear reason to keep it in. So um, does anyone have any further comments um, on 
any of the points raised um no um i think the only point that i would make there for is that on the recommendation that we spoke about which was recommendation three that um we encourage all development to contribute to the development of decentralized energy networks including by connecting them to where there is none in the proximity to development particularly made and then we can do common particularly major development i think works okay um no other comments then i think <laughs> we've finished this municipal year uh, thank you for all your hard work um, team um, and thank you in particular to Julie, um, I know you do a lot behind the scenes um, and yeah we just want to thank you for all your hard work, it is appreciated, um, you do go above and beyond so thank you um, so okay. much um, and um, thank you all for being cordial um, members of the committee uh, and uh, making my life a bit easier, hopefully I, have, I haven't been too difficult to bear with. Um, we finished 30 minutes earlier than scheduled. Um, so um, thank you all. Uh, and yeah, we'll circulate the final report to you all. Um, and then points I think you've all made quite strongly on various things. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to make them to the cabinet um, alongside the recommendations you've made. So thank you.